we as a church would really, really love to give you one. And you can get one of them from the connect table at the back. And the passage that we're going today, uh, we're going to read today is from John 21. So I'm going to give you time to flick through uh, our Bible. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, Friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, It is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. 
we know that his tes testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. I want to extend my welcome to everyone. I'm Emmanuel. You can call me Iman, Eman, if that's too long for you. Um, I'm excited to be bringing uh, John 21 uh, to us today. Now, who are the people that you follow in life? Uh, for parents, you might have noticed that your kids, uh, they follow you in all sorts of ways, trying to learn everything from you. Uh, if you're on social media, if you're on Twitter, uh, it's likely that you follow people uh, that you like or you hope to be like, you aspire to be like. Uh, or if you see on the sporting field, you've got uh, your captain, your captain of the team. Uh, they are the one uh, that the team follows. Uh, so just like we follow, uh, our kids follow us, people follow, we follow people on social media, uh, Christians uh, we are to follow Jesus. Uh, so the big question I want us to consider uh, today is have you ever failed to follow Jesus? Well, in the Bible, uh, a lot of us know, uh, some of you may not, about Peter. Uh, Peter's failure is very clear on show. Uh, just taking you through, uh, at one point he told Jesus to go away. Uh, he doubted Jesus when he was walking on water. Uh, he wasn't happy that Jesus was going to the cross to die. Uh, he fell asleep when Jesus told him uh, to pray on the night Jesus was betrayed. Uh, he said he would die for Jesus, but instead denied him three times. Now, prior to denying Jesus, uh, Peter said in John 13, I will lay down my life for you. Even if all the other disciples don't, I will. But he denied Jesus three times to three different people. Uh, a servant girl asked Peter, You aren't one of the man's disciples too, are you? And he replied, I am not. Another asked him on a separate occasion, you aren't one of his, his disciples too, are you? And he denied it. He said, I am not. Again, another asked, didn't I see you with him, see you with Jesus in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And so the passage, John 21, that we'll look at today, will help us deal uh, with this unfinished business. Uh, will help us to deal with Peter's failure and what that means for us if we fail to follow Jesus. So I'd love to, for you to keep your Bibles open at John 21. And the, a good question that uh, Matt brought up. Um, he talked about, yeah, John 20, that's what we uh, looked at last week at church. Uh, Jesus has risen, he's appeared to his disciples, uh, and then we hear at the end about why John has written the book, uh, his purpose, and that would have been a great ending for John. Um, so why is John 21 uh, in the Bible? Well, Jesus has risen, and so what difference is he going to make in the lives of those who follow him? Uh, that's what it's going to show us today. So we're going to look at two big points. Uh, and the first is the disciples lack direction. Uh, the second is follow Jesus. So let's begin with the disciples lack direction. Uh, so verse 1 to 3 in John 21. Afterward, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. Uh, it happened this way. Simon Peter... Thomas, also known as Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. 
I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. Uh, So we see here there are seven disciples. uh, And Jesus has already appeared to the disciples twice after he rose from the dead. And so the disciples, they're working out how are we going to live? Um, They might have still been working out how are we going to conduct our lives now that Jesus has risen. Now before Jesus' death, Jesus had taught the disciples and he prepared them for what life would look like after he had died. Now if you're someone who's been uh, to university uh, and you finish your degree, uh, you've been taught a lot Uh, you've been prepared well for the real world in your degree. Uh, But if you you come out of uni and you haven't got a job yet, you might be working out, what am I going to do with myself? And then you find yourself back at your parents' house, watching TV all day. (laughs) This is a little bit like what the disciples are going through at this point. They're trying to work out how they're going to live their lives after Jesus has risen, the disciples are lacking direction. So they go back to what they know. Their previous occupation, they were fishermen. So they go back to fishing. Uh, Verse 3. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Uh, The disciples, they go out, they go fishing. It's an all-nighter out on the water, but no fish. After verse 4 to 5, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. Uh, By now the disciples, they're seeing the sun rise, but there's zero fish in the net. And there's someone on the shore, about a hundred metres away. And they hear a voice, Friends, haven't you any fish? The disciples look at each other. And there is a collective sigh. No. Uh, So verse 6, listen to what Jesus says. He said, Throw your net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. So the disciples, they hear some advice from the person on the shore. And by now, they're out of ideas. They've been trying to catch fish for the whole night. And so at this point, they're happy to take any advice. So they throw the net in on the right side. And then they start to feel movement in the net. And suddenly, they're trying to do tug of war with the fish. There's that much fish. Uh, So verse 7, Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. The disciple whom Jesus loved, and that's John, he puts the pieces together. They weren't able to catch any fish. Then they hear a voice. They listen to the voice. And there's suddenly so much fish that they're struggling to pull the net in. And so John, his mind probably goes back to a point back in time uh, that we see in the Bible in Luke 5. In Luke 5, uh, Peter and John, they're not disciples of Jesus yet. They're not followers. And at that point, they're fishing in the Sea of Galilee. So in the same sea as the passage today, And they were fishing all night. And similar, they couldn't catch any fish. Um, But Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Peter, and he tells Peter, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Peter did so, and they caught such a large number of fish that the nets began to break. There was so much fish. They even had to get another boat. 
and they filled the boat, the two boats up with so much fish it was so full that it was starting to sink. And then Jesus tells them, from now on you will fish for people. So Peter and John, they left everything to follow Jesus. So John remembers back to that situation and he tells Peter, it is the Lord. It's Jesus. He's the one who has authority over fish and over nature. Uh, So continuing in verse 7 and going to 9, as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. Uh, The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards away. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Uh, so normally when you go swimming, you, take, you remove your clothing. Uh, but here, Peter wraps his outer garment around him and then jumps into the water. We see that he is eager to see Jesus. The disciples, they follow after him in the boat. And they arrive on the shore, they see there is already a fire going with some fish cooking on it. Uh, Verse 10, Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. Uh, So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153, but even with so many, the net was not torn. So Jesus asked the disciples to bring the fish over. And Peter did the work of hauling the 153 fish from the boat Uh, But it was really Jesus who did the catching. Now, has anyone ever watched one of those fishing competitions on TV? In those competitions, all the contestants, they go out uh, for the day to fish and they're going to catch the biggest fish for the day. Uh, Over the course of the day, they would throw out the small ones, they would only keep the ones that are worth keeping. And the large ones would give them a chance to win the competition. Uh, But here we see there's 153 large fish. There's 153 fish worth measuring and keeping. We see that Jesus, he provides abundantly for the needs of the disciples. Uh, So then we see in verse 12, Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. The disciples, they are already in awe. They've seen the Sea of Galilee fishing records broken. And now they're invited by Jesus to have breakfast. They've been out all night. They're tired, they're hungry, they're exhausted. It's like an episode of Survivor. If you watch that, uh, if you don't, it's people. They, they survive on an island for about 40 days. But sometimes they don't eat much at all and they're surviving on a handful of rice. Uh, but when they win a reward challenge, sometimes they just get all this food. Could be pizza, nuggets, fried chicken, fried tofu for those who don't eat meat. Imagine how the disciples would have felt after a long, exhausting night out on the water. Now, verse 13, Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and he took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. As Jesus served them bread and fish, Uh, The disciples, they would have an echo of John 6, uh, the moment where Jesus did the miracle of multiplying two fish and five loaves of bread. And the disciples, as they're handing it out to the 5,000 people, uh, now they remember back to that time, which is pointing to Jesus, who is Lord. 
Now, verse 14, this was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So we see that this moment, this story, Jesus appears to his disciples. It's his third time after rising from the dead. And we see that these disciples, they're tired, they're hungry, they're disciples lacking direction. They've gone back to their old job of fishing. But here Jesus has come, he's appeared to them. He's appeared to them to give direction. They, they see this miraculous catch of fish. And as we looked at, it's pointing back to the miracle in Luke 5, uh, where Jesus uh, brought in that abundant number of fish. And he told them in Luke 5 to go and fish for people. So we see here that Jesus has come back to remind the disciples that they aren't to go back to their old occupation of fishing, uh, but they're now to fish for men. Uh, they're now to tell people about Jesus and draw people to Jesus. Uh, so just like the disciples, uh, if we are those uh, that are following Jesus uh, we are also to go and tell people about Jesus. Uh, we're going to tell people about the things that we saw about Jesus so far, uh, that Jesus is the one who has authority over fish, over nature, over the whole universe. Uh, Jesus is the one here that provides abundantly for the disciples. Uh, we are to go and tell people about Jesus. And as Adam mentioned, meeting Jesus is a great way uh, for us to be bringing our friends uh, to go hear about Jesus. Uh, Jesus, the one who is Lord. Uh, so what happens next? Well, Jesus has some unfinished business with Peter that he has to deal with. And so that's what we're going to look at now. Uh, so the second point is, Follow Jesus. So after breakfast, Jesus needs to deal with Peter. Um, as they have breakfast near the fire of burning coals, where Jesus cooked the fish on, no doubt this would have reminded Peter of the fire that he stood near warming himself on the night where he denied Jesus to the servant girl. Uh, Peter denied Jesus three times, and so now Jesus has three questions for Peter. Do you love me? Jesus says. Now let me ask you this question right now. Jesus asked this question of you. You who stayed silent about me, do you love me? You who denied me out loud, do you love me? You who have failed to follow, do you love me? Are you who have rejected and denied me, do you love me? I died for you, do you love me? Now what kind of love is Jesus talking about here? Well, we see in John 14, verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commands. Uh, it's a love that is expressed in obedience to Jesus. It's one that Jesus says, I want you to have me as Lord. It's where we say, I want you, Jesus, to be the boss. I want you to rule. Well, let's see how Peter responds. I note that Jesus addresses Peter formally. Uh, he calls him Simon, son of John. Now, it's like when I address my daughter, Hannah Yam, why did you put paint on the wall? <laughs> now, Jesus is addressing Peter, by the Father's name, it's Jesus' way of saying to Peter, 
our relationship, Peter, your relationship with me is threatened by your denial. Now, verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? What does Jesus mean by more than these? Uh, it could have been the 153 fish that they caught that, that morning. Uh, but it's most likely referring to the other disciples who they shared breakfast with. Uh, because it was Peter who claimed that his love was greater than the other disciples. The time when he said, I would lay down my life for you, Jesus. He said that even if the other disciples deserted you, that he wouldn't. But this time round, he doesn't compare his love with the other disciples. We see in verse 15, Peter responds, Yes, Lord, he said, you know I love you. And Jesus said, feed my lambs. What relief Peter would have felt. Jesus has accepted his declaration of love for Jesus. Jesus is accepting his answer. But then in verse 16, again Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you love me? When Jesus asked the second time, at this point, Peter's heart must have been aching. Jesus is questioning me again. He's starting to feel a bit of embarrassment. But verse 16, he answers, Yes, Lord, you know I love you, Jesus said. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. Well, the third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? Again, it's the third time he hears Jesus ask the same question. It's now feelings of hurt added to his embarrassment. Now, it would have been totally possible for Peter to talk back to Jesus at this point. He could have left this conversation. He could have said, how dare you ask me these three questions? How dare you talk to me like that? It's only one big failure in three years. What about all the other times that I walked on water when the other disciples wouldn't? Uh, what about all the other times? But he didn't refer back to his track record. We see in verse 17, see how Peter answers, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Uh, Peter acknowledges that Jesus, Jesus knows all things. Jesus knows his heart. That Jesus knew that Peter would deny Jesus even when Peter said he would lay down his life. And now at this point, Jesus knows that Peter will obey him. Uh, so verse 17, and Jesus responds, feed my sheep. So this third command gives Peter no doubt that Jesus has forgiven him. And now Jesus gives a job for Peter to do. And that is, for Peter to love the people in God's church. Jesus, the good shepherd, he now assigns the role to Peter and the other disciples. We see in the book of 1 Peter, which Peter wrote, that Peter then hands the job on to pastors from there on. Uh, but let me ask you, what should motivate someone to love the people in God's church? We see in 1 John 4 verse 21, anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. That's other Christians. Loving Jesus must result in loving those in God's church. 
Now, the job Peter is giving here is really a call for all Christians to follow Jesus. Certainly, there is a unique role for Peter and there is something specific for pastors, uh, but all Christians are called to follow Jesus uh, by loving those in God's church. Uh, if you love Jesus, this results in loving those in God's church. Uh, and so let me say, let's continue uh, to love uh, one another. Uh, let's continue to love uh, one another in God's church. Uh, let's speak to one another in love. Uh, let's continue to show hospitality. Uh, let's continue to make it a priority uh, to be at small group, to be at church, uh, for the sake of others, for the sake of loving each other. Uh, but we see that following Jesus is not going to be easy. Uh, Jesus says to Peter in verse 18, Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. Uh, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to him, follow me. Uh, Jesus predicted here uh, that Peter would die following him. Uh, Peter said earlier in John 13 that he would lay down his life for Jesus. And as we've seen, despite his denial, despite his failing to follow Jesus, uh, we know that in the end, Peter died a violent death by crucifixion. Now to go back to the question we had at the beginning, have you ever failed to follow Jesus? Uh, we've seen Peter, we've seen his failure time and time again. Uh, but we see that he found forgiveness in Jesus. Uh, Jesus has died to pay for your sin and you can be forgiven too. Um, but as we saw today, how Jesus directed disciples who were lacking direction They'd gone back to their old job of fishing. And he told them to go and fish for men. He told them to go and tell people about Jesus. And then he called Peter to follow him. Now Jesus calls us to follow him too. And to show that by telling others about Jesus, and to love the people in God's church. Jesus asks you, do you love me? If you love me, you will obey me, and if you obey, you will follow. In the two ways that we saw today, uh, to tell others about Jesus, uh, and to love those in God's church. Let me pray. Our Father, we praise you for Jesus. Thank you that he saved us from sin uh, by his death to have forgiveness and new life. May we live out our lives loving Jesus and expressing that through obedience, uh, loving the church and telling others about the good news. Uh, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.